On August 19, 2019, Kings Island announced the world's third B&M Giga Coaster. Standing at a height of 287 feet, the ride would receive instant backlash for not being a quote-unquote true Giga Coaster, as well as being advertised as Kings Island's tallest, fastest, and longest steel coaster. This would lead to it being called underwhelming, overrated, and disappointing. People wanted another Fury 325, but instead they got Orion. This is why when we got the chance to ride Orion this past summer, we were not expecting anything spectacular. However, after our rides, we can confidently say Orion is elite and does not deserve all of the hate it gets. In this video, we will give a full in-depth review about the complete ride experience and our thoughts on why this coaster has become so underrated. So we'll start off with the layout and the coaster experience itself. Right out of the station, you ascend the 287 foot lift hill and then descend down the 300 foot 85 degree drop, which makes it a giga coaster no matter what some people say. This drop is fantastic. It is extremely long and it feels like you're falling forever, but the crest is fairly sharp, so you still get what I would call ejector airtime in the back row. It's one of the best drops on any coaster. The combination of length and strength make it special. The following pull out is quite intense and is almost a gray out moment. Then you climb up into the huge wave turn. This element is so massive, I'd say it is around 150 feet to 200 feet off the ground, but the train still takes a decent speed through it. It is also extremely long and drawn out, which makes the forces a little bit more sustained but not quite as powerful. There is some sideways floater airtime, and the strength does increase as the train descends, and there is a good dose of laterals as well when the train banks in and out of the element. I do have to add that the wave turn is much better in the front because of the extra laterals that you get. While some may have been expecting more forces from this element, it is pretty thrilling in my opinion thanks to the fact that you are so high off the ground yet banked all the way to the side. Anyone who is expecting RMC level airtime and laterals from this element had their hopes too high. Following this element is another intense pull out before the weakest element on the ride, the turnaround. There is a small amount of airtime on the ascent in the first couple of rows but nothing in the back. Then you twist to the right and drop back down which has some positive G's but nothing special. The next element is my favorite on the ride besides the first drop. This is the speed hill. It gives strong floater airtime, almost ejector, along with a nice dose of laterals. You also fly over this hill with a ton of speed so it just adds to the element. This is a great standout element on the ride and is a great way to kick off the second half of this attraction. And of course, the speed hill really isn't that small because of the fact that it is on a giga coaster, so the airtime lasts for a good amount of time as well. You then climb up into a huge camelback that gives solid floater airtime. Unfortunately, on the ascent, the train engages a trim brake which does hit pretty hard to the point where you can feel your body sort of lurch forward in your seat, but you'll still get some solid floater airtime which is sustained as well. It feels just like a camelback on another B&M coaster in the park, Diamondback. Then you bank to the right and head into the Helix. The park branded this element as Orion's Belt and it is okay for what it is. It does a good job pushing you back in your seat and giving some decent positive Gs for most of it, but to me it just feels like it throws off the pacing a little bit. After the helix, you cross under the first drop which is a great head chopper as there is a support that passes really close to the track. Next, you climb up into a twisted airtime hill that probably has the strongest airtime of the entire attraction. As you bank to the left, you get some solid laterals, then as you unbank, you drop down which gives a really good pop of airtime and laterals. Immediately after, you climb back up into the brakes, giving one more dose of airtime in the front rows. From first drop to brakes, Orion has a prime ride time of 52 seconds, which ranks 4th among all Giga coasters in the world. It isn't a long ride, but it isn't really short either. I think that it could use one or two more elements to make it feel more complete though. Just one or two in my opinion. But to think of the layout that way sort of casts it in a negative light, so I just try to take it at face value. And at face value, it is a pretty solid layout. I do want to quickly touch on the infamous B&M rattle. Even though this ride is only 3 years old, it still has a rattle. It isn't horrible, and it doesn't affect the ride experience at all, but it is strong enough just to the point where you notice it during the valleys. But the rattle doesn't affect the ride experience for me at all, so it's not that big of a deal, just something to know before you ride as it bothers some people. All of the B&Ms at Kings Island, including Diamondback and Banshee, are generally considered to be the roughest of their respective models, which is kind of odd. However, it has been proposed that the reason for this problem could be the ground Kings Island sits on. Coaster Studios hypothesized that this ground doesn't really mesh well with B&M's style of coaster design, causing the unusual rattle on these three attractions. However, one great part of this attraction's design is the trains. These have the normal B&M Hyper or Giga trains with 8 rows seating 4 across for a capacity of 32 riders per train. And these trains are some of the best in the entire industry. They are very open, allowing for a very free sensation during the layout. 
In addition, they have the amazing clamshell restraints, which are very comfortable and allow you to enjoy the forces of the layout. Plus, they have handles built into their strands so you can hold it up during the layout, ensuring it doesn't come down any further to limit any of your airtime. Now, Orion does have seatbelts like basically all of the Cedar Fair V&M coasters, but I didn't find these to hinder the experience at all really. Before you actually get onto the ride and even the park, Orion has a massive presence on the skyline. It looks absolutely beautiful with its blue track and white supports. It also looks massive, looming over the entirety of Area 72 and most of the park. The entry experience is also really nice. You have to walk under Racer, which is pretty cool. Then you are greeted by the massive lift hill and drop, which again looks stunning. Orion has an intimidating look because of how massive it is and how minimalist the supports are. There is a giant plaza which is themed as Area 72. This is a shared plaza with Flight of Fear, but Orion is the center of the experience. The actual ride entrance is really well done too. It is meant to look like some sort of space outpost and it works really well with the theme. There is also an overhead monitor that shows you walking into the queue entrance, but it is infrared, which is just kind of a neat and different touch. Along the queue, there are more of these shed type structures providing shade when the line gets backed up, which we did not have to experience at all. This queue has all sorts of teasers and easter eggs all over the place, which really adds to the story and are fun to discover. These include references to other coasters at Kings Island, as well as Volcano the Blast Coaster, Kings Dominion, and Fury 325 at Carowinds. I also think the station looks really nice. It is also stylized as sort of a space outpost. It feels very open and fits the theme very well. There are also plenty of easter eggs in the station, which really adds to the story and are fun to discover. There is also a building that has a pre-show playing on the overhead monitors, which I'd say is pretty well done. However, because of how fast this line moves, and the fact that the building is pretty small, you probably won't get to watch the entire pre-show in the time you are in there. I kind of pieced the pre-show together in my head with all the different times I experienced this roller coaster. Operations on this coaster are phenomenal, and I would consider them the best at Kings Island, which is really saying something. The most we ever had to wait was 20 minutes, and the park wasn't empty that day either. The crew is just doing a great job pumping trains in and out all day long. They were running three trains the entire day, most times with one minute dispatches. Even with three trains, they were rolling them and stacking was a rarity on Orion. Almost every time we hit the brake run, there was a train heading up the lift hill at the same time. As a whole, I think Cedar Fair is starting to do a better job of theming their rides. For example, Copperhead Strike at Carowinds, Orion and Mystic Timbers at Kings Island, Yukon Striker at Canada's Wonderland, and now the new for 2024 Iron Menace at Dorney Park, which also looks to have some good theming. These coasters have been the major additions in the Cedar Fair chain in the last few years besides the few RMCs. All of them have solid theming that drives the storyline across and adds to the overall experience. Now the one legitimate criticism of Orion in my opinion is that it did not make good use of the train it sits on at all. This could have been an opportunity to make something a lot different because Orion technically is a train coaster but you wouldn't ever know it. That's the one criticism that I really agree with. I think it was a missed opportunity to have all this potential to work with the train but instead focus on so many high off the ground elements. The reason that this coaster surprised us is because honestly we had it ingrained in our mind from so many enthusiasts that this wasn't that great of a coaster and it was the third, fourth, or even fifth best coaster at Kings Island. But I have this at number two in the park just behind Diamondback. The layout on Orion really flows in my opinion and most of the elements hit really well. If enthusiasts would just take this coaster at face value instead of perpetually comparing it to Fury 325 they would enjoy it a lot more. Maybe it is inevitable that we compare them because Orion opened after Fury but they are different kinds of layouts with different kinds of elements. I encourage everyone to experience this attraction with an open mind and base their opinions off their experience on this coaster alone, not any other rides they've had on Fury or Leviathan. I think you'll find you appreciate Orion a lot more. That will be all for this video. Please leave your thoughts about Orion in the comments below and let me know if you agree or disagree with my take on this giga coaster. Thank you all for watching.